What is up everybody? It is Wick here and I've got a bunch of items to show you that you can look for at garage sales and thrift stores. This video is going to focus on some things you might not know are actually worth some money. I get a lot of good feedback on these videos so I'll keep doing them as long as people want to keep watching them. So let's jump into it. First item we're going to talk about today are these vintage fountain pens and I found a couple of these before a uh, Schaefer brand. I sold one for like $140, another one in the 60s. There's all kinds of good brands. And you can see some of these are valuable. Here's a, a set of five supposedly sold for 12,700. And remember some of these comps may not be 100% accurate. The idea behind the video is that these items are valuable. People do want these fountain pens. Mont Blanc fountain pen, uh, what else do we got here? Some other brands is Pelican, Parker. Here's a Grail vintage Waterman fountain pen. You see a a lot of these are selling for over a thousand. A lot of them are 14 karat gold, 18 karat gold, high end pins for sure. And they, they got a unique look to them. You can kind of tell just by looking at them there. There's a lot of cheaper ones too, uh, that can still sell for 15, $20. Obviously most of the ones that have gold in them are going to be worth a bit more. So every time I go to like a thrift store and I see a, a bag of pins, I'm always looking in that bag of pins. This past weekend, there's a garage sale and there's a bag of old pins and I was looking through there, but didn't see anything good. This one right here, uh, this vintage Waterman, looks like the one I sold. It was just Schaefer. They have this kind of marbled look to them, a lot of them. And you know, we could scroll forever, right? And you're just gonna see a different brands. A lot of the same brands though, not a whole lot of high-end fountain in brands. Always check the desk drawers at an estate sale because you just never know one of these might be in there. Let's take a shift over to these Furbies. And uh, I've bought and sold Furbies before. I've actually got a decent amount to go through and test and list. I picked up over the last year. I just picked up some um, in the box actually for $10 a piece. I think I'll do pretty good on those. But Furbies are weird. It's one of those things where, you know, you got the Beanie Babies that just kind of collapsed in value. A lot of these Furbies have maintained value and uh, people collect them. Here's the Kid Cuisine Furby, um, the Holy Grail of Furby collecting it says in box selling for around 2000 out of box here's one for like 1500 now when i see a furby especially if it's vintage i'm just buying it i, I pick them up between a quarter um five dollars usually don't have to pay too much for them you see one price 50 or 60 dollars somebody's probably looked it up on ebay and they have accurate prices but you know i found them at goodwill in the plush aisle garage sales just in boxes so they can be everywhere and there's a lot of different styles of these things different colors different styles they are worth more money if the color is rare of course i'm no expert on furbies i just find one and I, I do the research of course you can use your google lens or ebay image search to try to you know find actual comps for the, the one you have but you can see a lot of these just in the hundreds uh, they don't have to be the Kid Cuisine $2,000 Furby. Of course, that would be nice to come across, but uh, they can be all kinds of different ones. When they stopped making these, I think they started making them again recently, right? So there's a good chance you come across some newer ones that aren't worth as much. Look at this dark looking thing. Furby Centipede. That thing is nightmare fuel right there. Like, oh my goodness. I've never seen that before. I don't know if some, that's custom made or what. It says brand new. I've <laughs> never seen a Furby like that. Let me know in the comments if you've ever found a centipede furby uh these things are creepy enough they were kind of one of those christmas items like cabbage patch kids you know they were selling out everywhere i remember i think i was pretty old then i, I wasn't interested in getting one here's a gremlins furby that's kind of cool i'd actually have a hard time selling that one if i found it but furbies they're worth money let's just go from furbies to flobies and i've talked about these some on the channel i have found a couple found one at a garage sale for 50 cents i found one at a rummage sale recently for a dollar and you can see they're worth quite a bit of money um upwards to 300 dollars for a full set and they have actually dropped uh, during COVID. These things pre-owned were like five, $600. I was going to sell my, the one I picked up for 50 cents then. And I went to list it and I'm like, oh my goodness, these things are worth so much right now. And I, I decided to try it because my hair was getting super long. You couldn't go get a haircut anywhere. So I'm like, yeah, let's just see if it, you know, how it works. Right. And it did a great job. And Needless to say, I've been cutting my hair with the Floby ever since. It's already, well, I don't know if it's paid for itself because, you know, I could have sold it for like 500 bucks, but you know, haircuts are expensive. Um, Like 20, $25 they got up to 
I remember paying. So, you know, in, in a couple more years, it'll definitely pay for itself. It's more convenient, sort of. I mean, it is a lot of prep work to get it set up, but still, if you're not interested in using one, you can find these things pretty much anywhere. Garage sales, rummage sales, state sales, you know, all that good stuff. Uh, Goodwill, you're probably not paying much for them. And you're definitely going to get over like $150 if you got the whole set. So Halloween is coming up and I've noticed all the thrift stores, Goodwill places, they got the, the Halloween stuff out, which is exciting because there's some very valuable Halloween things you can find, make some money. Uh, about three years ago, I think now I did a video on Halloween um, bolos, stuff you can look for. I'm sure I talked about the Don Post mask. I don't remember exactly, but you can see these Don Post masks have some big money and they really don't look much different than a lot of the rubber or latex mask you're gonna find. I believe Don Post did some stuff for movies and became popular. Emmett Kelly clown mask from 1967, $850. So you find one of these, it's a, a pretty solid amount of money you're gonna get. Even if you find a low end one, I think it's still pretty good money. Like the Frankenstein and the hands, $800. Um, just this couple random masks. Here's a ghost mask from 1977 Disney's Haunted Mansion. Okay, $750. You got the Wolfman, the Red Skull, the Green Skull, and in general, a lot of these rubber masks, certain brands, um, certain styles, uh, they can they can have a lot of value. So I'm always excited when I see one because I can do some research and see if it's actually going to be something I can make uh, a lot of money on. Even though I've never found a Don Post mask, I believe my time will come if I keep looking. But you can see as we scroll down in price, we we are seeing still in the hundreds. Uh, these things do not fall off in value especially around Halloween, you're gonna get some uh, more money than usual, right? I assume people collect these more than they do actually wear them. Speaking of mask, we have to talk about the Scream mask. I I've mentioned these before on the channel. I recently got one, it's, yeah, it's worth about $75. And these have different values based on the year, the generation. And I know people who have sold these uh, for around $1,000. So these comms are accurate. Not one of those items where, you know, None of these things are actually selling for that much. Um, it has something to do with the fun world, which one you're getting, which generation. You just have to do a lot of research. You see a lot of these are, are just showing Gen 1. Like here's one where someone's got the question mark because they don't even know. And they just did an auction and it sold for $760. You have a good one, you take good pictures and it's valuable. People are gonna bid it up. You're gonna get pretty good money. Of course, you can go to different forums on the internet and um, ask people because there's people that collect this kind of stuff, information on the internet. You know, eventually, I wanna find one. Uh, this one right here, this weird one with the teeth. Somebody sent me a message on eBay recently and asked me if I had that one. Um, must be a pretty sought after one. I don't see that one too often. The one I have glows in the dark. It looks exactly like that one. But when I looked up the model number, it's, it's only worth like 60 to $75 for whatever reason. It looks exactly the same to me. Also dimples, there's something to do with the dimples. But for me, if I see a scream mask and especially if it's old and you see these ghost face masks everywhere, right? And just not all of them are gonna be valuable. But if I see one cheap, I just grab it and do the research later. Also, if you enjoy these types of videos, don't forget to hit that like button for me. It really does help the video out a lot and I do appreciate it. So here's a bunch of these Jimmy Halloween decorations, props, animatronics. These things can be big money. It doesn't have to be the Jimmy brand. Uh, the Jimmy brand, they make a lot of the, the Halloween and Christmas stuff. You see, you got Texas Chainsaw Massacre here. Uh, you got Pinhead, which is looking like around $2,000. Here's Ghostface from the Scream. Um, best offer accepted. And people pay up for this Halloween stuff. Uh, it's, it's crazy. Here's Hannibal Lecter. And a lot of these are life-size. And I've seen these before. Uh, at garage sales, you just come up and there's like a, a big witch or something like that. I've, I've never seen any like of the serial killers or the, the horror movie icons. Uh, if I do, I'm going to have to do some research. Uh, they come apart. So they're not too terrible to ship. And Recently at a Goodwill, there was a Beetlejuice. I think it was new in box. Uh, Goodwill wanted $150 for it. It looked like it was selling maybe for $300. So it wasn't like a really good one, I guess. But there was another one. It was like a, a an undead Viking 
And it was only $70. I couldn't tell if the if it was new in there. Goodwill had it all taped up. It looked like maybe the original tape was there and Goodwill just taped over it. And the comps on that one um, looked like it could be around $250, $300. So there was some money to be made on it. I ended up just leaving it. Uh, one of the reasons was my, my car was full of garage sale finds. But I know this year there was something at Home Depot had right this year for Halloween and it sold out everywhere. Everyone bought it and it was selling online for like over a thousand dollars. I can't even remember what it was. I don't think it would be a bad choice if Home Depot or Lowe's releases something like this and uh, you buy it up and you hold it for a few years because I don't think they, you know, it's a one-off thing. They usually don't make more of this stuff. We're in the $800 range now on some of these. Here's one of the ghost face ones for 700, but it says read. So there's, there's probably some problems with it. Crypt Keeper. Really cool stuff. I'm, I'm wishing I would have bought that Viking now that I think about it. And maybe even the Beetlejuice, um, especially if they were new. And I should mention that they also make a lot of inflatables. Here's the Mystery Machine inflatable, brand new for $580. Just kind of madness, right? What people pay uh, for some of this stuff. And I've sold a lot of inflatables mostly Christmas. It's hard to get these Halloween inflatables because they sell so fast and stores do not order a lot. I think I sold a Jack Skellington one time I got from Lowe's on clearance. It was like 50% off hit clearance. There was like four of them. I bought them and immediately sold them for like a couple hundred bucks. If, if it's the same one, it looks like it's went up since then. Even pre-owned, if you find some of these inflatables, it's worth buying them and uh, actually inflating them to make sure there's no holes or anything and then and selling them because, you know, $475, you pick this up at a garage sale for $20. That's, that's pretty good. Uh, worth your time and effort, in my opinion. Here is an item that my friend Melanie over at Crow's Thrifty Finds YouTube channel found recently and I already knew these things were worth money but it, it reminded me about them and I'm like oh yeah I need to keep a better eye out for these I've never actually found and bought one but they are these pull down vintage maps like you'd see in schools and of course again it comes down just like every item is going to depend on brand uh, year all that kind of stuff but you just see some of them here like 315 399 a military one looks like it was best offer probably around 200 dollars. i'm not sure why people want these i guess just for decoration maybe for a rec room maybe for school i don't know homeschool <laughs> i really don't know people just collect them because i would imagine schools just don't have anything like this anymore here's a 1950s one for 125 120 but it's just one of those items that, you know, if you see it, you might as well pick it up, make a little bit of money. Here's some of these obscure things I think a lot of people don't buy. They don't notice. They don't know what they are. And these are sleep number comfort bed pumps uh, and the remotes, if you can find the remote. This stuff is very expensive when you buy it new. And when people get rid of this stuff, a lot of times they just, you know, get rid of the pump, uh, have it $10, $20. Uh, you can buy the whole mattress and everything, you know, if you want to deal with that sometimes and they'll sell for 800 bucks. But it's always good to think outside of the box, in my opinion. Anytime I see something with a brand name like Sleep Comfort, uh, it's going to be worth picking up. You can see these are selling pre-owned for around $300 uh, with the remote. If you just define the remote, uh, you're looking at maybe a hundred bucks for it. It's not something that, you know, you're just going to find all the time, but it's it's just a, a, a thing to remember that there's all kinds of stuff to sell out there. Uh, I bet just the tubes still pretty good for this stuff as well. I remember seeing somebody who bought a storage unit one time and it had a bunch of stuff like this in there. Um, some high-end bed, just a bunch of pieces, um, like a, an old store or something, and, and they made like tens of thousands of dollars. So you just never know where this stuff's going to pop up. It's just good to, to know about it. We might as well talk about some of the Lazy Boy lift chairs and recliner remotes as well. This is just another thing. It's Lazy Boy is a, a big name brand. These chairs can be two, three thousand dollars. So the remotes can be upwards of four hundred dollars and there's one for 300 300 275 269 if you're driving by and you see someone's old lazy boy out in the trash it looks like a lift chair maybe go see if the remote's on there rip that thing off right sell it they they just plug right into the chair they're pretty easy you know to detach and reattach don't need to buy the whole chair Actually, even if you saw somebody on Marketplace selling a recliner for like 50 or 100 bucks as one of these remotes on it, you didn't want to sell the, the, the recliner, just buy the recliner and donate it, take the remote. You know, there's all kinds of things you can do. 
I found one remote like this for a chair that wasn't a Lazy Boy, so I only got like, I think it was like $70 or something for, but the Lazy Boy ones are gonna be the high-end ones, and uh, there's other brands as well to look out for, but honestly, anytime you see a unique remote, it's worth looking into, because remotes for high-end items are money. So in my last video, I was talking about Cereal boxes, these garage sales, you always see these old cereal boxes, mostly Wheaties and uh, things with sports stars on there. And I said, I don't know what cereal boxes are actually worth. I just walk past them usually because anytime I've looked up any, I've found they've not been worth anything. But I decided to do a little bit of research and what I came up with is, it looks like most of the cereal boxes that are selling are going to be just the stuff from 60s, 70s, and 80s uh, more unique things i think people collect the cereal boxes or just food boxes in general the old stuff if they can find them like the coco hoots 1972 cereal box 460 dollars with 45 bids this is a, a scene i do not know i do not understand uh, the collector's market obviously when you see like the pokemon cereal box Stuff like that, I can kind of understand why that stuff's selling. Uh, Boo Berry cereal from the 70s, 375. And I bet this stuff's hard to find. Um, just come across a cereal box like this because people in the 70s eating Boo Berry, I don't think they ever thought, wow, you know, in 50 years, my Boo Berry box is going to be worth 375. I should hold on to it. But then a lot of people who buy the Wheaties with like Michael Jordan or whatever on it, uh, in their mind, they're like, oh, this is a collectible. I'm going to hold on to it. And then 20, 30 years later, it's worthless and they're trying to sell it at a garage sale, right? But oddly enough, it's the stuff like post grape nut flakes from the 60s, 338. Um, a lot of those are selling. Here's a Nintendo cereal box. I remember this box actually. I don't know what it sold for, best offer. Now something like this, I could see because I would probably save that cereal box, right? As a kid, I would have saved anything like that. Like here's a vintage 42 year old Pop-Tarts box that sold for Again, best offer, I can't really see. Captain Crunch, and it's cool looking at these. Oh, the Mr. T cereal, who remembers that? I could see this being a very fun genre to collect cereal boxes and food boxes, just trying to find the oldest one in the best condition. I kind of get it looking at this stuff, right? Here's some Ninja Turtle cereal. Uh, I kind of remember that as well. Pac-Man, uh, what else? Just all kinds of cool stuff. Pokemon. Look at Gremlins cereal. And talk about a good business. You could just produce cheap cereal and get licenses for movies and just make a killing, right? Pretty good business. They'd make a cereal for anything. Strawberry shortcake cereal actually looks pretty tasty. 1972 Cocoa Pebbles. Interesting, right? It doesn't look too different than what I remember. So sorry, I'm getting into this a little bit. Uh, we'll move on. Donkey Kong's the last one, but really cool stuff. So I'm always looking to learn about more things I'm not selling, areas I'm not really paying much attention to. And honestly, I don't pay attention really to sunglasses. And that's a shame because there's a lot of high-end sunglasses that are worth a lot of money. And then just vintage glasses people will buy for style that you can sell for $20, $30. You can see some of these high-end glasses like the Cartier Diamond um, brand, the Cartier stuff, which I believe is you know, mostly French. Well, there's a lot of comps for that kind of stuff, right? Here's some Lucille Ball. I love Lucy sunglasses for sold for $2,500. But yeah, we're looking at the high-end stuff right now. But the point is, um, even if you're not finding these high-end like Oakley's or whatever, you can still find sunglasses everywhere and uh, pick them up for a dollar, sell them for $20. It can be a, a very good bread and butter item, I think. So I'm gonna start looking at them more at thrift stores, look for some of the older ones in good condition, uh, the aviator glasses, all that kind of stuff. But I'll just go through and kind of uh, learn more about them. A lot of these are gold. Uh, they got diamonds in them. Scroll down a little bit more, get away from these expensive French sunglasses. And you just start seeing like Louis Vuitton, Chanel, Oakley and I could not tell you just by looking at sunglasses which ones you know would be valuable like that obviously you know you just look at them and see if there's a brand name but yeah I'm looking forward to getting out there and finding some cool sunglasses honestly but there it is everybody that's my video for today I hope you learned something let me know in the comments if you're buying stuff like this if you've learned anything don't forget to hit that like button for me support the video you can find me on Twitter Instagram and TikTok flipping underscore junk and this has been Wick till next time